After we pivoted to boat life and America's Great Loop, we finally took the time to upgrade our gear to a more professional level. And since down in the Keys here it's nice and cold today, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you guys what we've been using for the past 80 videos and our core gear set. We've received a lot of questions about our gear setup, and we have written it a complete comprehensive list on our website at showandjoe.com slash gear. But here, in this video, we're gonna go over our 10 core items, starting with our big kahuna, the R5. The Canon R5 is our primary camera. It's our primary shooter. However, we do have two cameras, which we'll go over, but this camera, we use all the time. Now, Elliot will go into the specs of this camera with all the numbers and research that we did. So the reason why we chose the R5 as our main shooter is because it's great at photos. It shoots, I think, 48 megapixel photos, which is just huge. And it's also great for video. And it'll shoot 4K at 120, which is basically the slow-mo. Uh, and then it'll shoot 4K at all the other settings as well. So it's perfect for us. It's like a good all-around camera. It can do anything that we want. And in a way, it's future-proofing for us because it also shoots 8K. Now, 8K, if you're not familiar, is a lot of storage. So, and nothing will really show 8K right now, so we don't need it now, but it's nice to have in the future if we so desire. It's also a Canon camera, so it's really rugged, and you know, we live on a boat, so we always expose to the elements, we're whipping it around, sometimes we have a spray coming on, and this thing has worked like a charm. We've been super happy with it, and yeah, it's got the flip around screen, which is kind of nice for vlogging, because we can hold it up, and we can check our uh, angle, make sure it's good. Um, it is heavy. So that's been something that we've had to get uh, get used to. Yeah, but this is our first camera, which we'll actually be switching out for the camera that is shooting right now. And that way we can show you our secondary camera. Now that we have a quick camera change, we'll go over into our second camera. Our other camera is our Canon R6. Now this is another mirrorless camera with great stabilization and great features and the reason why we bought this one is so that way we can both be filming at the same time and whenever we go out uh, in an excursion or like a destination normally Jen will have the R6 and she'll be taking amazing pho uh, photographs for our blog and for maybe a YouTube thumbnail or something and then we'll be filming most of our video on the R5. And that's kind of our lowdown. So that's why we got the second body and we didn't have this for a long time, but it's really changing the game with the amount of footage that we can get and amount of, amount of good footage that we can get. You know, back when we were internationally traveling, many days we would look at our footage and we would just have video, no pictures because it wasn't like easy for us to remember like, oh, switch out of video modes, take photos, stuff like that. Yeah, so it's been amazing. So that way we can each carry a camera and you may think like, well, why not just get two of the same camera? Well, one camera is technically a better camera or it has more advanced features than the other one. So one is basically our primary shooter and then this is our secondary shooter, but it is incredible. So that way we can have like because we're two different people, we have two different viewpoints, we are looking at two different things. Like, Ellie can capture one thing, I can capture another thing, Ellie can be working on um, capturing uh, videography, I can be working on photography. And it's same, we're in the same situation, but having two cameras has been such a game changer for us. It has really been incredible. And you might wonder, why we chose to go with Canon versus Sony or any of the other very popular mirrorless cameras nowadays. And the truth is that right when we were about to buy a camera, the R5, R5 came out and it looked great. It satisfied all of our needs, so we went with it. You can't really go wrong with any of the top cameras nowadays, but we have been very happy with our Canon products. They've yeah. been 
working phenomenally for us with no issues. And I think at the end of the day, you just have to pick one brand and go with it. And we've had absolutely no trouble with our Canons and we genuinely deeply love our cameras. They are amazing. And they've almost, they become like our hand at, at a time. Now to segue from our two Canon bodies are lenses. Now, one of the great things about having the R5 and the R6 is that they both use the same type of lens. So we can use our same lenses for both cameras. We have three camera lenses, and the one that we are shooting with right now is our wide body. So it shoots a really great wide angle, which we use for a variety of different shots, which you can see here. <sighs> This camera lens we use primarily whenever we're trying to get really wide establishing shots, or it's also excellent whenever we are holding the camera up and we're able to get both Elliot and myself into the frame um, while still kind of shooting in that vlogging style. For our second lens, we have a 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter lens. That's what we currently have on the R6 right now. And this is just a great all around lens. The 24 is still pretty wide and 70 is pretty zoomed and so this will get you through most things and this is just a great starter lens because it just handles a lot of different use cases now our third and final lens is our 70 to 200 and this lens has been amazing for us we we actually bought this lens after we got into the Chesapeake because we were finding that a lot of the things that we are trying to film in terms of um, scenery along the Great Loop is really far away. If there's a bald eagle flying around, if there's dolphins like swimming out in front of the boat, it's really hard to get it with our 24 to 70 lens. So we bought the 70 to 200, which extends out pretty far, and we we're able to get a really good, um, like long distance shot. Our next piece of gear are lens filters. We have two primary filters that we use on the camera lenses at all times. Um, and then we have a third one too, but we primarily use two of them. The Polar Pro Quartz Line Circular Polarizer gives an extra effect on our photos and videos, um, specifically with water. And it just kind of like makes things more crisp and takes things up just another level that's really hard to describe, but when you see the difference, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. So we have that. And then our second filter is the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Signature Edition 2 um, Variable ND Filters. Now these Variable ND Filters, we ra they range from two to five stop, which are similar to like sunglasses. So they're essentially sunglasses for a camera lens. And by doing that, it helps kind of take away some of the harsh light that um, is on different shots during the middle of the day. And since we are outside during the middle of the day filming, it's really nice to have that filter to kind of like ease out some of the harsh light. And not only do these filters help us shoot better footage for y'all, they also protect our lenses. Now the lenses that we have are all the Canon RF lenses. They're all very expensive. Now if we bang or somehow drop the camera lens, we could break a $2,000 lens. But with these filters, they're kind of a, a layer in between. So if we scratch the filters, these are still nice filters and they're still expensive, but they're not the same price of a lens. So that's like an added benefit for using these filters. And what we heard to what we heard told to us when we were buying this was you don't want to put a not very good filter on a good lens because it takes away how good the lens is. So these filters are all great filters and they don't subtract for the nice lenses that we've purchased. Now for audio, we also upgraded that from uh, internationally traveling and we had a ton of comments with people back when we were filming on our little point and shoot without any external microphone, how the audio is not that great, especially with the winds. But we are so happy with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. And that's actually what is on this camera, but we will overlay some B-roll so you can see it, but we're using it right now. We use it every single day. It's really important to us. One of the nice features about this microphone is some Australian company, which is kind of cool, but we have a, what's called a dead cat on the outside. That's what helps with the wind. And then we have different settings for it, like just easily can change it from the back of the microphone so we can make it extra powerful 
if we want to hear the noise from something far away or even less powerful if there's like some background noise that we don't really want to capture. So it is a fantastic microphone and we are really, really happy with it. We've had a lot of other content creators ask us about our mic because being on a boat, we get quite a bit of wind noise, but you don't hear it so often, or at least not until it's like extreme wind conditions or pretty significant wind conditions that you hear it. Um, and so they're very impressed with our mic and we have absolutely loved our mic and are very happy with the choice. <laughs> now, outside of our two main shooters, we're gonna go into our unique sort of video equipment that we have. And first off is our drone. <laughs> Now this is the DJI Air 2S, and this is an upgrade for us because we had the DJI Mini originally. Um, but the challenge with the Mini, fantastic drone, we love the Mini, it was great for internationally traveling. But the challenge with it was with a lot of the wind that you have on the water, it just wasn't quite big enough and heavy enough to withstand it. But with the Air 2S, it's been fantastic. It's quite a bit bigger. Um, it will, it, honestly, it just stays steady when we have winds. We can fly it almost any time. Probably anything up to 12 to 15 knots. Um, this thing will work great. It shoots 4K, which is great. Um, honestly, no problems with it. We love it so much. And it's even a little bit bigger, which is great for the stability, but that means we can catch it easier. So I've only cut my finger a couple times with this thing. I'm getting better. Now our other piece of camera equipment um, that is not like our main primary shooter is the GoPro. We have the GoPro Hero 9, which has the, the camera on the front, but the screen on both the front and the back, which has been really helpful so that way you can make sure that you're actually like in the shot. This GoPro shoots in 4K, 120, and yeah, we've had no problems with it. We love the GoPro to be able to take those water shots. And we hope to show you a lot more of those, especially as we're starting the loop again in the Florida Keys. So hopefully you get to see a lot more GoPro footage. Now, our last two pieces of gear are our tripods. The first of which is the Joby Gorilla Pod. And this Gorilla Pod has flexible arms which allow us to like hold it up and film ourselves which gives us just a little bit extra distance away from the camera lens which is really nice we're also able to customize this base on our flybridge to make sure that the camera is like being weighted down right or to attach it to different um of the bimini arms or whatever it's just it's very flexible and which makes it very versatile and we really appreciate that um quality and on top of all that we don't want our camera to fall over when we get waked or when we have a, a big blow coming over and that's this thing is great for that yeah our second tripod and final piece of gear is our peak design travel tripod in aluminum which is being used right now to hold this camera so this tripod we love it because of its collapsibility um, it yeah let me just collapse it now the peak design travel tripod um, collapses down into this like nice very concise shape um, which is great whenever we are carrying it around with us um, because it's not very bulky and it doesn't take up a ton of space it is pretty heavy so that way in wind conditions we know that it's going to stay in place it has a locking feature so the camera locks in and it also has a feature so that way we know if it's level or not which on land we tend to want to make sure it's level on the boat it probably doesn't matter and it'll be fixed in post. Um, but yeah, we love this tripod and think it is a great addition to our camera bag. Thank you guys so much for watching our updated and upgraded gear list. Now we have a ton more information, including all of the accessories, which really do make a big difference on our website at showandjoe.com slash gear. We appreciate you watching. Thanks and we'll see you in the next one. And this is the end of the vlog. We are hoping we hope you had a Merry Christmas.